Some time ago, a YouTuber called Arthur TV contacted me and asked if we could collaborate on a video. Now, Arthur has grown a lovely channel which sees him react to lots of different things, but he's not really concentrated on anything science related. So, with that in mind, I thought it'd be great to see someone who doesn't normally do science videos react to Facebook science posts, and I'm gonna chime in as well for good measure. Yes, you better believe it, this is the return of Facebook science. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tim Ford Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Right, back to today's video, which, as you all know, is the return of Facebook science. And all I'm going to do is hand you over to Arthur himself. Away you go, buddy. Right, so I have been a fan of Simon Dan's channel for a very long time now and a fan of science since as long as I can remember. So getting involved in one of these videos is an absolute honour. Today, Dan has sent me a bunch of posts from the weird world of Facebook science. Uh, so let's just take a look. All right, first up, NASA is lying to you. The International Space Station is a hoax. No points for originality there. There isn't an electrician in the world who would install cables and wires like this on a $150 billion project. Now, every now and then, with stuff like this, I come across a meme and I'm like, I kind of get it. Like, to me, that does seem chaotic, and I, my brain does kind of go like, why is it like that? But I think the difference between conspiracy theorists and normal people is, we don't tend to look at something that we don't really understand and just be like, well, it must be a lie, none of it makes sense, and write the whole thing off as a hoax. Exactly right, Arthur, and a great point. This is called personal incredulity. They can't believe it, so therefore it can't be true. Maybe there's method to the madness, maybe it, there's a good reason for it, like it makes the wires more easily accessible. Um, who knows, but I, I would be curious to find out why it is so chaotically messy. Um, but I'm not sure that it just being messy means that the whole thing is a hoax. Yes, well, the wires are like that on the ISS because, and you won't like this one, conspiracy theorists, they just are. Now, it was intended that all those wires would be nice and neat behind panels. But over time, as more and more things were added to the space station, obviously more wires were added too. Astronauts don't have the time to organise all of that. And to be fair, if something breaks, having the wires out like that makes it a lot easier to fix. All right, next up. Overkill or not, on Sunday at 3, all mobiles, Wi-Fi, etc. are being switched off for half an hour in my house. We know the jabbed are giving off harmful EMF from the graphene in their bodies and that it reacts with the mobile frequencies and the unjabbed. We are electric beings. A lot to take in there and a lot to take issue with, but the one thing I do like about posts like this is that they name a date and time. So this was tweeted April 19th, so on Sunday um, at 3, a date that's ov obviously already passed, nothing happened. And so we can look at this and look at these people and say to them like, you were wrong here, right? Like, are you going to admit it now? I'm sure they'll probably come back and be like, oh no, something happened, but you know, the side effects will take years to sink in so that they can keep deluding themselves into being right. But at least we can laugh at them and be like, okay, nothing happened. Indeed. And I believe they're referring to the emergency broadcast system test, which happened on the day of the London Marathon at about 3 p.m. Now, this is where everyone in the UK received a mobile message which was testing the emergency broadcast system. Now, obviously, the conspiracy theorists thought this was going to activate something, but nothing happened. All right, next up, Owen commented on a photo of an astronaut floating above Earth in space moments before the immense gravitational pull of the sun sucked him mercilessly into the fiery ball, unless he was diverted into an as-yet-unknown identified black hole, similar to the virus. They just have to throw in a virus reference, don't they? They always do. They do, yes. It's a prerequisite for Flat Earthers, actually. In fact, when the pandemic hit, the Flat Earthers switched very quickly across to those sorts of videos, and it was pretty hard to find Flat Earth content for a while. Also, surprise, surprise, another conspiracy theorist doesn't understand gravity. I think they just assume that the second you leave the Earth's atmosphere, gravity from the Earth just completely disappears. But I mean, you can tell from the photo that the astronaut is very, very close to the Earth, meaning the Sun is still very, very far away. So obviously the gravitational pull from the Earth is still going to be much stronger than the gravitational pull of the Sun. And, you know, if they really wanted to, or at least if they were capable of doing so, they could just use the maths to make sure that it checks out. Bang on, Arthur. Unfortunately, flat earthers are allergic to maths. I feel like a lot of these memes and a lot of these flat earthers wouldn't exist 
if people could just understand just like gravity to just quite a simple degree um but it does make for quite entertaining viewing of their memes so it does indeed and why we can make videos like this all right next up nixon talking to apollo 11 on a landline phone with a picture taken from the moon in the background take your time you'd think with the number 11 following apollo that they'd realize that this wasn't the first mission to the moon i think it was apollo 8 that successfully reached the moon and orbited it and actually might have taken that photo. I think Dan will obviously clarify. Apollo 8 did indeed take the photo, Arthur. You're correct. But additionally, Apollo 10 orbited the moon as well. But yeah, we did actually go to the moon and take photos um, from the moon, or at least from the orbit. So this does make complete sense. It would have taken a couple of seconds to Google. Um, and also it's so low quality. They'd be pulling this up instantly on just the fact that it could so easily be Photoshopped. So. A number of classic blunders there. Isn't there just? It's flat earth in a nutshell, really, isn't it? All right, next up, a post from Young Earth Creation. I finally found some credible evidence found in the wilderness. Breaking news. Goliath from the Old Testament in the Bible is found outside Rome. The theory of evolution was wrong. First of all, is this supposedly evidence, credible evidence, a photo? It quite clearly looks quite photoshopped, if not AI generated. Also, these kind of people absolutely hate photos as photo evidence. If you send them a photo of the Earth from space, they go, oh, that could easily be computer generated. But they don't have that same kind of standard for evidence like this. Of course they don't. A phenomenon called confirmation bias. Now, this is where they find evidence that already fits their beliefs. This is just classic them. Again, it's like they will look at mountains and mountains of evidence for evolution or the most high res live stream of the ISS going around the earth in real time and pick apart the tiniest details and be like, oh, I don't believe any of it. And they'll look at one photo of a guy with a photoshopped massive skull and be like, this is enough evidence to compel me to believe that everything, he, everything to do with the theory of evolution was wrong. Also, there's no verified news source or any kind of scientific journal article accompanying this. It literally is just that photo. Oh, we like Arthur, don't we? First of all, where is he getting the idea that Goliath is is this skull? Um, and another thing, what's this got to do with the theory of evolution? What part of the theory says that it would be impossible for one of our ancestors to have branched off, evolved to be much bigger than us, and just died off? Scathing reaction from Arthur there on that one. Love it. All right, next up. So special. Water is a portal. Have you ever noticed that you have the best ideas and downloads, whatever that means, when you're in the bath or shower. That's kind of true. Water holds information. The water of our planet has been programmed with all of the knowledge, love, and understanding we seek. Water allows your consciousness to travel to other dimensions easily. It allows your guides to communicate with you. Water is the most overlooked tool for spiritual advancement in our current time. I mean, not the most harmful message, but does sound like a lot of waffle. Doesn't it just? And no one seems to consider with these sort of posts that a normal glass of water has most likely passed through the bladder of a T-Rex. Seems to avoid them, that one. I mean, quite a, a strong conclusion to draw from the fact that you just get good ideas when you're in the bath or shower. They do always say this, don't they? That sort of like, if you want to come up with a good idea, it rarely happens in a boardroom meeting or when you're brainstorming a good idea, it just randomly comes to you. So I get the general idea, but I'm not sure water is always involved and I'm not sure water is the cause. And I guess most importantly, water is good for you. So at least it's a harmless message. Yeah, I agree here. Waffle, but harmless. Okay, this is exactly what I say when people think astrology is some bogus stuff. When you keep a strong magnet near a mobile phone, you'll see it acting up, true. And everything in space, including us and the earth is made with electromagnetic field. It's stupidity to say that the planets larger than Earth have no impact on Earth or organisms living on it. Science has even proven that Jupiter's electromagnetic field protects Earth from asteroids, but still astrology is bogus. How dumb can we be? Again, that's a lot of ideas mixed into one, but I'm pretty sure it's Jupiter's massive gravitational pull that protects Earth from asteroids. Although I think it also doesn't help if the maths is right, because I'm pretty sure you can get some asteroids that weren't on course to hit Earth, 
and Jupiter perfectly pulls it in and it could smash into us. An interesting thought here, uh, but yes, you are correct. The massive gravitational influence of Jupiter means that there are what we call Trojan asteroids on Jupiter's orbit. This is what they mean when they say Jupiter protects the inner planets. So I'm guessing it protects us more than it harms us from, so I kind of get that point. But either way, I'm not sure holding a strong magnet near a mobile phone and seeing it act up is enough evidence to say that the position of the planets when you were born has any bearing on your personality when you grow older. Spot on. LOL Algebra, another good start. We can see without math magic. Right, they're going at maths now. I love how it goes, it's slowly gone from biology to chemistry to physics, and now we're just beefing maths. Although, if the laws of physics and mathematics completely disprove everything you believe in, attacking them does kind of make sense. We can see without math magic that 0 0.99999 recurring is still technically zero. I think what they're trying to say is that if you don't have one thing, you have no things. So like, if you haven't got one thing, you've got nothing. But I'm pretty sure mathematically 0 0.9 recurring is actually one. For all intents and purposes, yes, Arthur. You definitely got at least an eight for your GCSEs, didn't you? Hopefully I've got your age roughly right there and assumed you didn't get a letter grade like the old style. Um, until it actually makes a full one, it's not one. It's 0 0.99999, which is still zero. I mean, it'd be quite an interesting one if you sort of gave him a, a one litre jug of water and you said, I'm gonna fill it up to 0 0.999. Let's say it's not recurring, just 0 0.999 litres. Would you say you have zero litres of water? Is there no water there? I'd be interested to know what he'd say. He'd say water is fake and volume is a hoax, I imagine. You can download any Bluetooth app and literally track those who have been vaccinated within 100 metres from you. They have their own electronic signatures within their system after being injected. I've seen it done. You can then go in deeper and read their vitals and temperature using just a regular Bluetooth app and connecting with their body. Tell you what, if this was actually a feature, I reckon the vaccination rate would, would rise at least 5%. A doctor was forging vaccines and after an incident, he got a call from the government telling him that they can't connect to the patient, not his cell phone, but him directly. That speaks volumes. So they're saying that a doctor got a call from the government being like, you vaccinated someone and we can't connect his body. They really are, Arthur, yes. There are levels to this game, matey. I, I'm gonna try this right now. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna add, open up my Bluetooth. Nothing. I must have, I must have not been vaccinated properly um, because sadly I haven't got this. I'm instead gonna have to invest several hundred pounds in a smartwatch if I wanna keep track of all of my vitals and stuff. So I feel like I got scammed. What a shame. Loving that sarcasm. It's almost a prerequisite for this channel. Continue. We're not living in evolution. Remember that happened 100 to 200 million years ago. Apes are staying apes nowadays. Don't blame me, go to Tulsa Zoo. We went there two years in a row and the apes were still apes and they didn't look any different from the last time we saw them. This is such a classic evolution denier post. First of all, not understanding that it didn't just happen once. Evolution is a constant ongoing process. And second of all, that it didn't happen overnight. The gradual change happens over a very long period of time. And you understand that just as many others do too. However, when you're religious and you've only got a few thousand years to play with, you can get a bit tetchy. Like modern humans didn't evolve overnight 200 million years ago from our ape ancestor. That's just when modern humans started appearing in the fossil record. Yeah, this is another level. Usually evolution deniers talk in terms of generations. Like, oh, why have I never seen an ape give birth to a human? But they're not even waiting for a new generation to come along here. Do they actually think that evolution is gonna change an ape in two years? Yes, Arthur. Yes, they do. You're only gonna see evolution in a species if its life cycle is a lot shorter than that, like in bacteria. Couldn't have said it better myself, matey. Melbourne is closer to Antarctica than it is to Darwin. It's 3.14 to Darwin, but only 3.12 kilometers to Antarctica. That's actually really interesting. Not if you use miles instead of kilometers, but point taken. What do you mean if you use miles instead of kilometers? Now, I must admit, I threw this one in for fun. I wanted to see how Arthur would react. I'm guessing what they mean is if you swap the Melbourne to Darwin to miles, it will be just under two. And just under two is now less than 3.12. 
But I think he's kind of missing the point that if you convert one to miles, you have to convert the other to miles and Melbourne will still be closer to Antarctica using Mars instead. If that's a joke, that's actually weirdly very funny. Um, but if not, hilariously stupid. Yeah, I agree. It's either one of two ends of a scale, isn't it? Either geniusly funny or totally inept. This is a prehistoric dinosaur skull. Just kidding, it's a hippopotamus skull. Just further proof that dinosaurs are over-exaggerated animals from the Ark. To be fair, that does kind of look like a dinosaur skull. If I had seen that, I wouldn't instantly know that that was a hippopotamus. It'd probably take me a second. Unfortunately, I don't think paleontologists find fossils and just go, scary looking, has lots of teeth, must be a dinosaur. I'm pretty sure they, you know, figure out what layer of the earth they find it in or they date it using carbon dating methods and stuff like that. So I don't really think, again, it's another very simplified understanding, if any understanding at all, of how things work. Yeah, I would say the latter. The thing is they're claiming that the Ark is real whilst also claiming that dinosaurs are real. Now there's a slight time discrepancy here, isn't there? Fellas, some women have masculine spirits attached to them and when you lay with them, these spirits can transfer onto you, which can cause you to desire a man. Spiritual transfer is real. I think this is one of the first times I've ever heard someone make a meme or any kind of comment that says, sleeping with a woman can make you gay. I don't get what they get out of posting stuff like this. I mean, does it come from personal experience? Has this person maybe slept with a woman and gone, hmm, nah, maybe I'm interested in men. Maybe this was their awakening and they're blaming it on spirits rather than their own, you know, their own experimental uh, experiences, I guess. Um, spiritual transfer is real. Interesting conclusion to draw from it. Yeah, it seems the homophobes are present in all areas of life. A 1,400 year old ginkgo tree at the Buddhist temple in China. Ginkgo trees can live up to 3,000 years. Wow, that's very cool. What a shot. It's 2022, as in 2022. Curious to know how it can live up to 3,000 years old. How it can live up to... Okay, right. I think... <laughs> Does this person think that the entire world started 2022 years ago? Sadly, yes. Is that what they think the, the years denote? If so, I've heard of young earth creationists, but I thought 6,000 was their limit. This is, this is a new one for me. I've never heard someone thinking that the earth is only 2,000 years old. If you look hard enough, Arthur, you will find someone that thinks the earth is a banana. Pseudoscience versus actual science. The number of times I've seen this posted, for some reason, I don't know why I do this to myself, I join loads of flat earth groups on Facebook just because I find their memes absolutely hilarious. I thought I was the only one. And this general idea that they think that we think that the reason that water's curving is because the bottom of the container being earth is curved as opposed to the gravity pulling it in from all sides is just, they don't understand our argument. They don't understand the basic science argument of why water curves around the globe. It's not because the, glo the, the globe is curved and the water's just curving around its surface. It's because it's all being pulled equally into the center. So the reason that that's flat on the right and it would be flat in this isn't because it's not curving around a globe, it's because it's all perpendicular to the centre of the earth. Very well said matey, it seems that most flat earthers don't get much. But essentially yes, the water is curved like that because it's all being pulled to the centre of this mass that we call earth. Alright and last up, if a man has more iron in his blood he'll produce a girl, if he has more magnesium in his blood he'll produce a boy. This is such an old classic. I bet this kind of stuff has been going on for absolutely centuries. How many times have you heard the like, oh, if you do it in this position, you're more likely to conceive a boy, or if you do it at this time of night, you're more likely to conceive a girl. I'm actually one of nine kids and I have seven sisters and one brother. So I'm curious if my dad has more iron in his blood. Um, maybe he needs more magnesium in his diet. I think this is one of the only conspiracies as well that I could actually ask him about. Well, I'm sure he'll laugh it off because of course the sex of the baby is determined by the type of sperm that fertilizes the egg. An X chromosome sperm will produce a girl and a Y chromosome sperm will produce a boy. Now there are some things which are different about these sperm. A Y sperm are faster swimmers. 
but they last much less time than the X sperm. They are far more resistant, the X's. But anyway, that is the last post, so thank you very much for having me on, Dan. I genuinely can't tell whether I absolutely love or absolutely hate reading these posts. Um, they absolutely infuriate me, but they're also very entertaining, and hopefully you guys watching at home found them entertaining too, so thanks for watching, and thanks again for having me on, Dan. Not a problem, my good man. If you're up for it again, then let me know. Well, there we go, another Tim Fall Tuesday all wrapped up into a nice, Facebook science package. We're all done and dusted. Let me know in the comments if you want me to continue with the Facebook science uh, videos again. We had a bit of a break, but if you want to see them again, we'll kick them off once more. Thank you so much for watching today. It truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do hit the like button. Please do subscribe to the channel. And of course, go and check out Arthur TV as well. The link for his channel is in the description. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great week. And I'll see you on Friday for more Flat Earth fun. See you then.